Okay, ready? We'll call this meeting to order. Uh, this is the Fort Mill Town Council meeting, Monday, June 19th, and thank you all for attending. Um, if you would, please stand so that we can do the Pledge of Allegiance, and then uh, Mr. Huntley will lead us in an invocation. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we pray as we gather together at the Town Council Fort Mill, you give us the wisdom and courage that we need to do what is best for our town. We pray that you would bless us, bless our town, our state, and the nation. In thy holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> If everyone would please silence their phones so that we can conduct the business of the town in an orderly fashion and give due respect to all those that are here. Council members, you've seen the minutes uh, for June the 5th, uh, 2017. Uh, do we have any um, changes, deletions? Hearing none, do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve the minutes. We have a motion to approve second. the minutes and we have a second. Any further comment? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. We have a unanimous decision to approve the minutes. <clears throat> Public comment. Pursuant to Section 246 of the Code of Ordinances for the Town of Fort Mill, any resident may appear before council for purposes of providing public comments on any municipal matter with the exception of personnel matters. Those who wish to speak must sign the public comment sheet prior to the start of the meeting. Do we have anyone that signed in? Everybody have an opportunity to sign in? All right, we're done with that. Public hearing, public hearing item number one, an ordinance authorizing the entry by the town of Fort Mill into an updated development agreement with Pace Development Group Incorporated for property located at York County tax map numbers, this is my favorite part, <coughs> 02012-01191, 02012-01192, and 194. Such parcels containing approximately 44.64 plus or minus acres located on Fort Mill Parkway, <coughs> authorizing the execution <coughs> and delivery of such development agreement, repealing ordinance numbers 2016-37 and 2017-10 and other matters relating thereto. Note this is the second of two public hearings. This is in Ward 4, whose representative is Mr. Moody. We will open this public hearing. You'll have to read those numbers again. You left the dashes out. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. I was wondering if we could do lotto tickets for that. <laughs> I'm just <I'm> kidding. <laughs> no comments? All right, hearing none, we will close this public hearing. Presentations. Presentation number one. Update from the York County Regional Chamber, Wayne Elliott. Welcome. We know a few of those people. <laughs> <laughs> Different entrance, huh? <laughs> well, good evening, and I uh, just want to say thank you for uh, allowing me to have a couple minutes to speak to you guys. Uh, basically, I'm here, uh, Wayne Elliott, with the York County Regional Chamber of Commerce, and uh, just kind of want to uh, address a couple things. One, obviously, you've heard some things about uh, the chamber's not in Fort Mill anymore. Um, that obviously is not the case. We may not have a physical office anymore probably because it's on the property the town purchased just <laughs> recently. So, um, but no, we actually did see a very low foot traffic in that building. And we weren't really able to facilitate meetings in the building anymore because of the space, uh, which is actually a good problem to have because uh, we just outgrew it essentially. So um, anyway, physically we are not here, but we are very much a strong presence in, in Fort Mill. And um, so, uh, Couple things, we facilitate monthly area council meetings, which Chris Pettit sits on, and we'd like to thank him for that. Uh, we have two business connection meetings that meet here uh, every month uh, at Loon Co-working downtown. Uh, we also have, uh, we did have the One Million Cups program, which uh, One Million Cups is a national program, and we were hosting it here for the months of uh, April, May, and June in Fort Mill. Uh, very heavily attended. We actually had people from um, uh, Greensboro even come up, I'm sorry, Greenville come up to attend the One Million Cups program. So you guys are getting outside audience to uh, come witness the uh, One Million Cups in Fort Mill. 
Uh, we've had several ribbon cuttings in the past few weeks. Uh, two business after hours uh, just happened. Uh, well attended again, just kind of speaks to the growth in, in Fort Mill as well. Uh, young professional group, we have a networking event uh, June 29th. All of us still qualify for young professionals, I know. Uh, <laughs> Larry I make and the I joke. Are yeah. <laughs> Don't, they're, they're kicking me out in a few, a few months, so no worries. Oh, but it actually, again, is at Loom Co working uh, in uh, downtown on June 29th. And uh, August 22nd, we have our uh, Fort Mill TK State of the Community, and that will be at the courtyard in Kingsley. That will obviously cover uh, highlights of what's been happening in the area, and obviously, we know the uh, the amazing growth that Fort Mill is experiencing and we are happy to be part of that. Um, so without the building we do have some information centers uh, posted. We, uh, it's again in Loom co-working. This information center has uh, uh, chamber benefits, uh, calendars, and contact information. Along with our meetings there this is a point of uh, reference for us to, uh, to host uh, anybody with inquiries about the Chamber of Commerce. Our other location is at the Gold Hill YMCA in Tiki K, so just for reference for you guys. Um, we do appreciate the partnership we have with the town. Obviously, that's why we're here uh, speaking to you. And I want to thank you know, the mayor for her support and all of this. And obviously, again, Chris, for serving on the, uh, the area council. Uh, I know there was a little uh, uh, scheduling overlap, and yes. we had uh, our rewards program on May 8th. Yes, it was a little oversight. <laughs> Uh, so you guys weren't able to attend, which we apologize for. We were here. Yes, I know. I know where you guys are at. Yes. Um, Doing the town's business. <laughs> which is very important. So, yeah. so we're, essentially we're bringing the awards to you. So I have two gentlemen with me today, and I'm guessing everybody's pretty much familiar with them. Uh, I do uh, want to introduce uh, Mike Zimke. He's our uh, uh, Volunteer of the Year Award. Everybody knows Mike. Him and his wife have been in uh, Fort Mill for seven years. Uh, I know he was immediately uh, very active in the community. Uh, Mike and I served on the Young Professional Board together, and he is also the uh, he's on the Strawberry Festival Committee, mm -hmm. the director of the golf tournament, which uh, I participated in both years, and it's always been an amazing turnout. So I give you the uh, 2017 Volunteer of the Year, Mike Zimke. Yay, Mike Zimke. You're good. All right, Mike is good. <laughs> Moving on. And uh, this award is uh, for Citizen of the Year, and the town actually sponsors this award. So uh, it means a lot giving it to Ira Colthorpe, which Ira's family has been in the town uh, in Fort Mill for over 200 years. And I do know because I remember the bio that he was his family was delivering firewood to Springs. So uh, I mean, if that doesn't speak, you know, volumes, 200 years in the town. So um, anyway, this is Ira Colthorpe, Citizen of the Year, sponsored by the town of Fort Mill. So. Thank you. Thank you. I, I know everybody pretty much personally here, so I just want to thank you for the work y'all do. I know a lot of times it goes un, un, uh, appreciative, but y'all really work hard. Y'all had your hands full with the growth. A uh, little bit of background. I went to work for Bobby Kimbrell in the police department and worked for Fort Mill Police Department 16 years. So I've seen the growth there. I actually worked for Waddell one summer. It didn't take but one summer working <laughs> on a trash truck, on a trash truck to do that. So I, I learned my lesson quick. And then most of you know I worked for York County Building and Codes for 24 years and retired from there. So I've seen the growth. But Coltharp Incorporated appreciates uh, everything that y'all do. The growth has really benefited our family and our family business. But uh, y'all do a great job, and we really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to interrupt and say a thank you to Ira because indeed you have served in many capacities, um, not just Fort Mill, but the county as well. And you've done a fine job in staying involved uh, by joining the chamber and by, by being active in that effort. Um, thank you. Thank you deeply for what you do. Mike, you're a breath of fresh air uh, <laughs> to have somebody new to come in and take on the volunteer work that you have done and aid us with the Strawberry Festival you're a lot of fun to work with so we're very fortunate to have folks like yourself so congratulations to both of you and because we are on tape i would like to say that the chamber does a lot of important work that many people don't know they study issues they look at the businesses that are coming uh, to the town or that might come to the town or that didn't come to the town they look at the issues that might impact us on the type of growth that is positive and that is with the business community so they're very oriented to making sure that we balance out the residential taxes with the business taxes so that everyone benefits so I'd like to thank you for the work that you do we didn't think that you left Fort Mill we felt like you just uh, you just combined forces so 
you can cover more territory. Absolutely. So thank you so much um, for everything that, that all of you have done. Yes. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. I was I mean, just I'd like to ask too, if you will double check communication, because mm -hmm. we're not always getting notified of all of these wonderful things that are happening. Um, Absolutely. Um, I work from home, so a lot of the events going on at Loom are things that I can kind of stop by and go visit and actually benefit me because of the facility and what they right have there. to offer. So if you'll just double check that Absolutely. for us, please. Yeah, that's not a problem. Thank whatsoever. you. Anybody else, feel free to reach out to me, communication, what's going on, newsletter. Yeah. Our own Trudy used to uh, work with the chamber as well for many years. And Trudy, I believe... Trudy's the one that uh, lassoed me in, I believe, on the chamber. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tied you, did she? Yeah. I'm like I'm tied I did get a little bit of work out of you. <laughs> a little bit. I, just, just, yeah. Yeah. I look forward to a closer relationship with the chamber Absolutely. so that we can Absolutely. coordinate efforts and make use of our um, consolidated um, energies. I think that would be really good for Fort Mill. Absolutely. And I'd like to second what Lisa said as far as uh, communication. Communication, mm -hmm. because that is important. Uh, um, I don't work from home. I, I really don't work. I don't <laughs> <laughs> I wish but, I didn't have to. Yeah. <laughs> but um, I would like to have a little bit more information, in, more in a timely manner. Sometimes mm -hmm. I do get it, but it might be that morning Absolutely. when something's at noon. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. yeah, we can definitely look into all that. So. Okay. Yeah. And Wayne, did you come from Indian Land? Um, I did, yes. Yeah. K through 12, Indian Land. So. I love that. Indian Land's a great place. It's I, a good community. It's not what it was or <laughs> when I graduated, so a lot Fort different. Fort Mill's but not either. So. Absolutely, yeah. yes. Yeah, there was only one high school in Fort Mill when I graduated from Indian Land. So. Oh. But no, not, it's not in Kansas anymore. It is not Kansas anymore. <laughs> anymore. Yeah. But uh, thank you for your time. And obviously, you. you know these gentlemen and uh, obviously our members, and we're here to support you. And thank you for your support. Let's have another thank round you. of applause. Congratulations, guys. All right, thank you. Presentation number two, financial statements for the month of May 2017th, our own Shantae Bowler. <laughs> it's okay. Good afternoon, evening. Okay, just wanna give you, speak briefly about the financials for the month of May, as was last printed on June 16th. We are eight months into the fiscal year, which puts us at a target range of 67%. Basically, all of our revenues and our expenditures and all of our funds are living within that target range right now as we get closer and closer to the end of the budget year we'll probably pick up a little more with some of our expenditures in terms of those things that our departments are um, needing to purchase before the budget year ends. Mm -hmm. Concerning our special accounts, our local accommodations tax collections to date is $250,404. The impact fee collection uh, fire protection is at $415,879. Municipal facilities is at 606902 and recreation is at $1,512,671, which gives us total collection so far for our impact fees of $2,535,452. And I did want to just uh, give you an update. Um, our RFP process is moving along very well um, concerning our new software. We have gotten in our mm -hmm. proposals and we have a couple of demos that will be coming up. One will be coming up June 21st and another will be happening on June the 28th. It's our hope and desire to have named a vendor by July 10th so that we can bring, uh, bring that information, that vendor to council for formal awarding at your July 17th meeting. That is it. Any questions for Shantae? Where are we in the budget process? We, oh, I had that down there. <laughs> it was the last thing. Yeah, budget budget has gone out, and um, department requests <coughs> were due back today. So now the fun will begin. <laughs> and Dennis, when do you anticipate presenting that to us? Um, I know in the past we've done a workshop type thing. Will that have, be have July? 
Let's send, yeah, okay. We'll, we'll send you the calendar out. I don't have one in front of me, but I'll send you the budget calendar okay, with all the dates. Thank you. Okay. Um, your, your meeting is scheduled, or your workshop is scheduled sometime in August. In August? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Okay. All right. Can I have a question, please? Um, since I'm still kind of new at this, so you send um, requests to each department about and then they send back a budget to you? They send, no, they send or back they send all back their requests. A request. Okay. Personnel, capital, everything. And their normal operating expenses. Okay, now is that what we will see? No, no ma'am. We, um, we'll you, take that, then we have a series of meetings with all of them, and then we'll have a, a usually we have like a full day budget workshop and go over it with council. <clears throat> Okay, so we used to yeah. see all of those so um, several years okay, ago. So we, we don't see what they actually request. And well, actually, what we do, it has their request there in a column, mm -hmm. and then it will have the managers uh, recommended and then what gets approved in the third column. So you do see all the numbers. You will see it in general terms. You will not see it in the type of detail that we see. But you will see what the departments are requesting. Mm -hmm. And then you will see what the manager is will be recommending, and then council will have some uh, discussions okay. about that. Dennis, there are only two mm -hmm. Saturdays in August after school starts back. I recommend we look at those okay. because of vacations and other travel schedules. Okay, uh, we can do. It that. seems to be easier when school's in session. So you want to while school is in session Correct. you're saying yes. okay <clears throat> i got it okay we'll, we'll look at that and do, adjust it on our calendar yeah, sounds good okay sooner the better <clears throat> what, what i think we did but as mr people would say we can go back and look at it but we yeah. picked the correlating saturday this from year previous years but we'll, we'll look at that i'll look about, at the school we'll calendar see. first and then we'll adjust accordingly okay. <clears throat> that'd be great i yep. appreciate it <clears throat> mm -hmm. Shante, thank you for being Thanks. here to answer questions and for bringing the information to us. Hearing it over uh, if once a month has been very helpful, yes. very helpful, and to be able to ask you questions and let you guide us. I look forward to seeing presentation on the financial system and the benefit that it will bring to us. Can't wait. They're going to be all day or both days because there's so many applications that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. All right, we'll move into old business items. Old business item number one, second reading. An ordinance annexing York County tax map number 736 0000029, 736-0000129, 736-0000132, and 736-0000311, containing approximately 8.20 plus or minus acres at 1122 through 1126 West Hensley Road. This is Ward Number 3, Mr. Huntley. Staff recommendation is to approve. Planning Commission recommendation was a 4-1 vote to approve. And our technical representative is Joe Cronin. Do I have a motion? Make a motion we open old business you item can. number one. Or approve, approve, I'm sorry. That's okay. Approve old business item number one. Mm -hmm. Second. Okay, I've got a motion uh, and a second to approve. All those in favor, no. please. No, don't do no. that yet. Sorry about Scratch. that. Sorry. <coughs> sorry. That's okay. I have to recuse myself from the vote on old business number one. Thank you. Please let the record reflect that Representative Shari has recused himself uh, from this particular issue. <coughs> Is that from voting and discussion? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Has to be. Joe? Ready? Good evening, Mayor, members of Council. Um, <coughs> as a follow-up to the um, uh, the last meeting a couple weeks ago, um, we did receive a request today from uh, Debbie Weatherby, who is the agent representing the buyer, or the seller, or both, um, requesting a deferral on this item until your next meeting, which I believe is scheduled for July 17th. 17th. Mm -hmm. yeah, is that right? Mm -hmm. um, they are trying to work out um, some utility easement issues um, with uh, neighboring property owners, and they've um, requested <coughs> that second reading be deferred until your July meeting. I believe we'll need an amended motion. Should I make it? It doesn't matter. Okay. We'll amend the motion uh, to defer this particular um, item at the request 
of the developer. Uh, I need a second. Second. Okay. Any further conversation, question, comment? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. We have a unanimous decision to defer this until the July 17th uh, meeting. That's 7 17 17. How strange. Hmm. It's unanimous if he's it, the, for the voting individuals. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you for. Thank you. Yeah. You keep catching me. Do it. <laughs> I'm still learning. That's good. That's I'm all right. Old business item number two, second reading: an ordinance authorizing the entry by the town of Fort Mill into an updated development agreement with Pace Development Group Inc. for property located at York County Tax Map Numbers 020-1201191, 020-1201191, 020-1201191. Such parcels containing approximately 44.64 plus or minus acres located on Fort Mill Parkway, authorizing the execution and delivery of such development agreement, repealing ordinance numbers 2016-37 and 2017-10 and other matters relating thereto. This is ward number four, represented by Mr. Moody. Our technical staff is Joe Cronin, and our staff recommendation is to approve. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve old business item number two. I have a motion and a second. Joe, would you like to talk to us about this? Um, this is simply renewing a development agreement with Pace Development for property on um, the Fort Mill Southern Bypass. Um, sits directly across from uh, the new high school, Catawba Ridge High School. Um, this is essentially the exact same development agreement that you've already approved in the past. Um, that one did have a delayed effective date, uh, would have become effective on the date that the um, the, the buyer pace development took title to the property um, not to exceed 90 days the 90 days did lapse um, so we're just requesting that um, the development agreement be renewed um, they have uh, essentially gotten all their approvals from planning utilities engineering DOT um, so I think it'll be a, a very short um, window in which the um, uh, property will close this time around um, if you recall this is um, uh, the project they agreed to donate uh, an acre and a quarter um, to the town for uh, what will uh, we believe become our second fire station um, and they actually did send us a copy of a draft plat um, of the piece that will be carved out we did get that last week so i, I think everything's moving forward um, should be a, a fairly quick turnaround time uh, assuming you all approve uh, the renewal of the development agreement okay any questions for joe comments and once it closes, then we'll transfer, of transfer the, the yes. property for the yeah, fire the, station. The ordinance will become effective on the date that Pace takes title to the property, which they were holding off until they got all of their approvals. Mm -hmm. And I believe, Greg, they have all their utility and engineering. They have all their planning and other approvals. So it's pretty much good to go. Cool. Thank Great. you. Great. Further comment or question for Joe? <coughs> Hearing is, none. Oh, I'm sorry. Property, correct? Correct. correct. Mm -hmm. Sorry. That's okay. You're fine. <laughs> Further comment or question? You're good? Yep. All right. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. And we have a unanimous vote on old business item number two to approve. Old business item number three, request to provide utility service to 1854 Quailwood Drive. Joe, are you also the technical resource for this one? or You are? Yeah, okay. Sure. All righty. Uh, do I have a motion? I'll make a motion. Two. Open old business number three. You can approve, approve or approve. deny one of the two. To, to approve old business number item number three. Thank you. And do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Um, Dennis, I take it that they have found the means by which to connect to the utility service without crossing other gorges. Yes, Mayor, they, you had requested, uh, council requested that we get the additional information to plat the uh, topo and, and get the agreement done, which Barry did, and all of that's been executed. I believe y'all got copies of that now mm -hmm. up front. So um, as far as I know, Greg, any issues crossing? No, the design for the actual connection. So they're going down the street now, yeah, right? Greg, another manhole or something? Aren't they? It's no, actually no, a manhole, no, manhole on the adjacent property. Manhole on the adjacent, okay, okay. 
But and, yeah, as far as I know, everything's good to go. So. And that is to be paid for by the property. That's owner, right. Correct. Not It'll be his by service the line. Town. That's correct. Okay. I just want to make clear that mm -hmm. this is not a request for the city to extend service at the dime of the taxpayer, but rather that the landowner will pay for the extension. That's correct. Okay. Is that mm -hmm. correct? Does everyone un so mm -hmm. there's no additional expenses at all for the town? No, he'll have to do all that construction work and everything himself. But you know, this piece service. of property will remain in the county, is that correct? That's correct. So we will not be extend will not be annexing or extending additional services. He signed an agreement property. that said if and when council desires him to annex into the town, he will do it. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. And this is sewer service up to it. Only sewer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, aye. nay. And we have a unanimous decision on old business item number three. There are no new business items. And for information and discussion, we have information item number one, Unified Development Ordinance, UDO, and new zoning map, Joe Cronin. Um, this is broken into subsections with a discussion of proposed amendments to the draft UDO and a discussion of pros, uh, proposed amendments to the new zoning map review and adoption schedule. Before we enter into this, I think it is fair to say that this project um, defies description. Uh, from the standpoint of we have begun a, a process that has taken us over a year, uh, an outside consultant, and hours of time by staff and effort um, given by council, uh, which of course, without that being our primary role uh, job, we have given it uh, due time, but maybe not enough consideration. Because it seems that with the length of the document and the importance of the document, that we give it uh, an even further opportunity for scrutiny. Um, Joe has taken our efforts and uh, has tried to push us along. Uh, note I said push. Um, but we do have quite a few um, housekeeping, policy amendments, table amendments, and zoning map amendments that we need to talk about. I don't think we'll get them all done tonight. Um, but what I do think is that it has become apparent that the housekeeping items will be um, not as significant as the ones that are policy amendments um, that will make significant changes to those that live and work in our area. So what we will attempt to do is to give it continued consideration until we reach that point that we can feel comfortable um, approving the UDO for application uh, within the community. It is a good thing to take the old documents and bring them up to the current date, um, but it is not something we should ever take lightly because there will be changes in policy that will be administrated to our community and our constituents. So, uh, Joe, if you'd like to take the floor. Thank you, Mayor, members of council. Um, <clears throat> one of the, the things that we've been dealing with um, in the planning department is um, having the unified development ordinance sitting out there pending um, for as long as it has been has created a lot of uncertainty in the community. And what's happening right now, and I think the last meeting was a very good example of this, um, where there was a lot of discussion about the R5 and R7, that the ordinance that's sitting out there today is a draft. It was prepared by an advisory committee, endorsed by the planning commission. And <clears throat> obviously you know how many calls and, and inquiries, inquiries we get on a daily basis. And basically, What's happening today is anytime somebody has a question whether they want to do something with their own property, if they want to buy property and maybe open up a business or build a home, um, every time somebody's calling, we're having to walk them through our current ordinance, an ordinance that's currently pending before council. And of course, the question always comes up, well, when will the final version be adopted? Um, so that's what we're hoping to try to accomplish is to move forward with some kind of schedule, whether that's adopting this ordinance with amendments or if you don't want to adopt it, that's fine too. That's a, a policy decision <coughs> for council. Um, <clears throat> but trying to put a lot of the uncertainty to rest um, that's currently out in the community. Um, can, we want can we talk about that for a second, sure. Joe? 
until this UDO is blessed and changed into policy form, mm -hmm. it is very simple to go back to the policy that exists and make those decisions. Mm -hmm. There should be no confusion. There's certainly anticipation, and there's certainly hopes that we make those changes, but there are policies in place by which we make those decisions with all those that have questions. Yeah, and, and that's inputs. that's absolutely correct, and we stress that mm -hmm. with every person who calls. Um, you know, we do feel that we have an obligation to tell them that there is something pending that may or may not be adopted. And as long as they submit an application that complies with our current ordinance, we'll continue to process those applications. Thank you. I just um, want to make we, sure everybody understands yes, that. Yes, and I appreciate you bringing that up. But we, we do want to make sure, especially if somebody is buying property with the intent of, you know, building a house or opening a business, um, we do want to make sure they know that there's a possibility mm -hmm. that the requirements that they would have to operate under may be changing at some point in the future. But you are correct. Anything that comes in under our, our current code, as long as it's in effect, will be processed under uh, our, our current ordinance. Um, <clears throat> going back over the last couple months, um, we did have a, an opportunity to meet with um, each of you individually and in small groups and go through um, several of the major changes. Uh, that were included in the draft unified uh, development ordinance that was approved by the Planning Commission um, several months ago. Um, we did get a lot of comments and suggestions back from Council, and we did incorporate all of those into a, um, a draft list of recommended amendments. And <coughs> that's actually the, um, the thick document that I passed out before the meeting started. It has a bunch of blues and greens on it mm -hmm. and reds. <coughs> Um, <clears throat> that document, what we were trying to do was um, to put some language together that addressed um, the concerns that you all brought up in previous meetings, um, whether it was in those small group meetings, individual meetings, uh, or any comments that you may have sent in uh, as we've gone uh, through this process. Um, and also, we, we know there's some things that have come up in the past. Um, I know Ms. McCarley and Mr. Huntley have talked about issues related to um, you know, driveways not being long enough for people to park, and as a result, people blocking uh, street thoroughfares and sidewalks. So we've, we try to take all of those things and incorporate it um, into a list of proposed amendments. Um, there are a lot of them. This is a very thick document. There's a total of 193 proposed amendments. Um, some of them come from council. The uh, overwhelming majority of them uh, do come from town staff. Um, as I mentioned, this is a, a document that was put together um, by a group of, of volunteers, our planning commission members, and, and some other board and commission members. Um, by and large, it's a good ordinance, but there were a lot of things that we thought um, could be tweaked a little bit um, to, to work better and be a more cohesive document. Um, <clears throat> so what we did was we, we put this table together uh, and tried to summarize all of the uh, changes that were either being requested or recommended by you as well as by staff. Uh, and we, we tried to lay them out in as simple uh, a presentation as we could. Um, so for each one, um, we, we numbered each recommended change. Um, we also tried to give a, a, a brief summary as to, and, and these were solely our opinions, whether we thought they were housekeeping items. And a housekeeping item could be as small as fixing a typo or if you have two sentences without a period in between. Uh, most of them are very minor, um, just tweaks to language. It doesn't really change the, uh, the content of a requirement, just maybe reads a little bit better or is a little more consistent with um, language uh, elsewhere in the draft ordinance. Um, those are the ones that are listed in green. Uh, we also had some in red with a P. Those were policy items. Those were more uh, substantive changes that um, may change actual requirements from the draft document compared to how they're worded in the draft today. Um, the third column is the sponsor. Like I said, the majority of these did come uh, from the planning department. Uh, myself, Diane, and Chris um, spent a lot of time going through the ordinance, looking for conflicts within the ordinance, <coughs> things that we thought maybe were unclear or could work better. Um, and we, we included all of those items um, on this um, draft list of recommended changes. If you want to find where a specific item is listed in the draft, we also give you the uh, page number. So if you have that PDF version of the draft ordinance, you can go and pull up the actual page number and, and see this change or recommended change in the context of the ordinance itself. Uh, we also list the section 
um, which is, um, again, another reference where you can go and find, you know, where specifically it is in an ordinance uh, within the draft ordinance. And we give a brief explanation of the topic that's being covered in that section. Um, so if you look down at, at Article 2, about two-thirds down the page, um, Article 1, I'm sorry, Title and Purpose, a lot of those are dealing with vested rights provisions. So if somebody has a, an approved project or uh, existing entitlements, um, but that's what, what those amendments are dealing with. <clears throat> the, the meat of this document is the actual proposed amendment. And what we've tried to do is um, to, to make it very transparent to what the proposed change is. So we have the existing language, and anything that's being recommended to be added is in blue text with an underline. Anything that's proposed to be deleted is in red text with a um, strike through. So you can see how specifically we would recommend um, that the language be amended. And then on the far right column, uh, far right three columns, we have um, a staff recommendation. Um, because most of these are coming from staff, not going to be a surprise. We are recommending approval of, of almost all of them, or just about all of them. Um, <coughs> and then we also have one for uh, planning commission. And should council decide you want to move forward and give first reading to the document and incorporate any, all, none of these changes, um, by law, we would have to send those changes back to Planning Commission uh, for review prior to uh, Council giving second reading. Uh, so any change that you all do decide to incorporate if you want to move this forward, um, we would send those changes and get a recommendation from the Planning Commission on each one. And then finally is a column for um, Town Council. And just to point out, if you flip to page two, um, you'll see some of the text is highlighted in yellow. And the purpose for that is if that was an item that was specifically requested by one or more council members, we wanted to make sure that we highlighted that in this document so you can see um, that we did take your issue and we tried to find a way in order to incorporate whatever concern or whatever amendment you had uh, into the draft document. Um, so this one in particular, uh, item number 11, uh, was from the discussion that we had at the last meeting about the R7 district and the maximum allowable density. And we had two council members at the last meeting who expressed a concern. Um, we did incorporate that amendment into the draft, and you can see it there uh, highlighted in, <coughs> the, uh, in the actual text for the um, proposed amendment. <coughs> You'll see there are some items um, that are highlighted um, with blue, and those items are referring back to a use table. And one of the additional supplemental attachments, um, it's a sheet with a bunch of colors on it. Looks like that. <coughs> and this is the use table, which is included um, in the draft unified development ordinance. So in the ordinance, we have a, a number of districts. They're grouped by residential, commercial, industrial, and mixed use. And <coughs> Within each of those districts, those districts define um, what's allowed to be, to be built or how property can be used within those districts. Um, we went through basically line by line um, for all of our existing, um, uh, existing zoning as well as what was in the draft. And um, we found a lot of instances uh, in particular where we had, um, uh, for example, existing businesses which maybe may have become non-conforming as a result of the new unified development ordinance. Um, and then other things that we felt, you know, maybe weren't allowed in a district, but we felt they were consistent with what that district was trying to accomplish. So um, <coughs> we treated this very similar as all the other ones. So you can see um, within each district, and they all, they all are color coded, and those colors will correspond um, to the zoning map. Um, which if you adopt this, we'd have to adopt a new uh, zoning map as well in order to uh, apply those new zoning districts. Um, but again, we wanted to make sure it was very transparent what the recommended changes were. So if there was a use that wasn't previously listed in the table, you'll see it here highlighted in blue and underlined. So you can see that that's one that we added. Um, any changes to the individual districts, if you see something that's underlined or strike through, that's something that we've recommended uh, either adding or removing from the master use table. Um, <coughs> So we would recommend that, um, that you all look at that um, as part of this process. The, um, the last item that we included in the um, packet on the very last page, I think it's page 37, 
the draft um, zoning map, which is the map that will implement the recommendations of this ordinance, uh, was endorsed by the Planning Commission back, I think, in December. Um, there have been um, several changes um, to the town that have taken place since then. Uh, we've had a couple annexations. We've had a couple rezonings. Um, so for those, we recommended, um, should you like to move forward, that we also amend the map um, that the Planning Commission endorsed in order to uh, incorporate those annexations and rezonings. <clears throat> our, our hope, and we'll leave this up for um, further discussion, um, our hope is that over the next couple weeks, um, and we wanted to give you some time. This isn't something that we thought, you know, you could look at over a weekend and, and come prepared to uh, discuss and debate. Um, we had prepared kind of like a, a summary sheet with all of the um, different um, <coughs> items from the proposed list of recommendations. And, and this is solely our recommendation or request is that each of you over the next couple weeks as you have time to review uh, the proposed amendments, um, if you see anything that you have a problem with, that you have concerns with, if you have questions about, you want to discuss, debate, need more information, if you just mark, mark it on this sheet, and we had requested that um, all of your worksheets be returned to the town manager uh, by July 10th, which is three weeks to, uh, from today, and we would go through and take all those and try to separate out the ones that any one or more members have an issue with. <coughs> and we would set those aside for additional discussion, debate, Q&A, um, with the hope that the ones that, that anybody didn't have a major issue with, you could, if you so chose, uh, approve all of those just with one motion, instead of having to go through 193 separate items one by one. Uh, if there was one that nobody had an issue with, um, our recommendation would be, if you wanted to move forward, was to, to take all those ones with one vote at first reading and then go through the individual ones um, separately. Um, so that would be our, our request, our recommendation. Um, as with anything, uh, if any member has additional questions, um, wants to sit down and have a follow-up meeting with us to discuss any item on here or anything that's not on here, uh, we of course will make ourselves available for that. Um, if council would like to have additional workshops, we'd be available for those as well. Um, but um, that's kind of in a, a quick, by my term, summary uh, of, of where we stand with the UDO and the, right. <laughs> and, the, uh, <coughs> and the proposed amendments. I see that this work represents um, a significant, significant effort on your part and the planning department's part to make this more understandable and more digestible uh, to this council. I think the importance of it cannot be under, understated. If we look at the comprehensive plan as being the box that we work out of, these are the tools with which we manage the growth. These are the hammers and nails and, and saws, if you will, with which we manage that growth. So if you can understand, a box is a box, pretty complex, and we need it. But this is, this is very unwieldy at times. Mm. And I do think that it is a significant um, of, of significant importance that we give it the due attention. And you're right, last council meeting we ran into a couple of corners where we were kind of boxing ourselves in mm -hmm. and we're uncomfortable with that. So we would like very much, I believe that um, Mr. Cronin's request is a reasonable one for us to get through and provide some feedback on the items we would like to have additional study. Um, certainly it is summer, but um, I'm hopeful that everyone will um, attempt, make an attempt. Do you guys have comments or questions for Joe um, that you would like to offer? I think it looks really good. Yeah. Through, the, through the half of it that I've gone through already, it looks, I mean, you've taken in mind a lot of the stuff that we've said. This was no easy task. No. I mean, to be even no. remotely easy. So, and we're straddling a very fine line between existing homes, new homes, new trend, new building trends, you know, and still trying to preserve the character of the town that we all love. So, I think you guys are doing a good job on this. And I do think it's important to point out, which we do <coughs> on a regular basis, but I don't think we can do it too little. We do have to make decisions that are legal. Uh, that are not discriminatory among the people that own land and would like to develop their land and make changes to it. 
Uh, we don't want it to become a hyped up um, homeowners association document for the community. We really want to do this to the best of our ability and to make it right. So I don't care how long it takes. Um, I think we do it until we're happy with it. Exactly. I, agree. I do like the idea of approving the document, the items that we all agree on mm -hmm. and getting that behind us so you can start working towards that. And then the other more controversial items that need more discussion. Because we can amend like, as needed. Yeah. Correct. Oh, yeah. We can amend as needed. Sure. So I say that. Way to work. Yeah, I agree. I thank you. I want to thank the planning staff for doing mm -hmm. this and Joe putting all this matrix together. I'm going to tell you, just to develop all these tables and put all the. Makes my matrix. head hurt. <laughs> we spent a lot of time and hours, and, and uh, Chris and Diane, too, with their comments and incorporating your comments into here. And I think he did it in a way now that you can take and uh, dissect each element. It's a and then determine if you yes. know it's acceptable or not, or if it needs mm -hmm. to be amended. It'll be much easier to do and go through. It's yeah, a lot we, easier. We we were trying to take. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I know you all participated in those meetings over a couple months ago, and you know we were trying to take your comments and your concerns, but to actually put them in paper. Um, you know, I would imagine most of you probably don't sit around on uh, at night or on the weekends. How can we amend this language in order to address whatever this concern is? That, that's what you we're here for. Right. So if, if you had a, if you had a, that's what you do. That's what keeps you up at night <laughs> and on the weekends. Yeah, um, but if you had a concern, what we were trying to do was to incorporate that, where you can actually see the language in the context of the section or the paragraph, um, and, and we really want to make sure did we address whatever your concern was. Uh, for a lot of the, the major policy items. Um, you know, we, we took your issues, we took your concerns, and we tried to come up with how we think was the best way in order to address that <coughs> in the code. But, you know, at this point, what we're looking for is some feedback from you. Did we get it right, or do you want to go in a different direction? Guys, it's so funny when Joe is doing his job. It's like he's in the back seat, and we're driving. <laughs> and as we're driving the growth, and we, we, we kind of lean over this way, just go, get back, get back. So it's, uh, it's something that should result in a better product, you know, that we have someone that's as skilled as Joe and our planning staff, Diane and Chris, that they're able <coughs> to show us the textbook perfection that's out there. But I do think that as a council, we're, we're where the rubber meets the road, and, and we're getting the feedback and pushback, and yes, we do hear it and see it, um, but those things aren't handled. Um, there's no silver bullet, and they're not handled immediately. So we, we must give deference to all positions. How, so, how are we standing with the, and I apologize, I don't remember that gentleman's name, that's been the company that we hired to help us work this through? Or st are we under a timeline with him, or he's with us until we vote this in? How, how exactly are we with that? He, he contacts me about every two to three weeks just to see what the if status is. If we're still here. Is. Okay. <laughs> and, okay. Um, you know, we, we told him at this point, you know, it's been presented. We're talking about some amendments. Um, so, you know, if, if we get to a point, we come to the July meeting and, you know, you guys are, are happy with the changes, um, I, I think we can incorporate those into, and we would have him do a lot of that, uh, incorporate those into a revised first reading draft. Okay. And, um, you know, he, he is still kind of on standby, just waiting to get some direction from us. Okay. Joe, on this multicolored sheet. Uh -huh. Uh, you got P's and C's. What's this? What's that stand for? Sure, very good question. Um, <clears throat> within each zoning district, you have um, a number of, of uses which are permitted by right, meaning you can basically do it in that district as long as it meets setbacks and um, all the other requirements for that district. Anytime you have a C, that means there may be some additional um, requirements for that particular type okay. use that wouldn't apply to anything else in that district so I think if you look for example um, you know the, um, the the general commercial district would allow gas stations but it also allows a small retail shop or a coffee shop or something like that mm -hmm. you may want to have additional restrictions that you would put on a gas station that you wouldn't put on a small retail shop so by virtue of it being conditional uh, most of them are going to refer back to some other section for that particular type of use. And you can see there may be larger setbacks or some additional requirements um, that are applicable only to that particular type use, okay. but not anything else that would be permitted by right. Okay, thank you. 
further questions, comments? And the P stands for permitted. Mm -hmm. P is permitted and C is conditional. conditional. And there is a little bit of method to the madness. I know there's a lot of colors on here, um, but these colors will also correspond to our new zoning map. So if somebody goes to the ordinance and they see something is in kind of that light yellow color and they want to find it, you know, you can just go to the map and look for the same color. And um, so you weren't just playing with InDesign? No. Was, okay. <laughs> I can tell you stays up at night worrying about this. And these are actually, believe it or not, there are kind of, I guess you call them national type standards where yellows are residential, <laughs> reds are commercial. Um, Blue's water. Yeah. So, I mean, it's. <laughs> There, there was some strategy to how those colors were selected. Green grass. Again, it represents a tremendous amount of work, and I do have already thumbed it. It is a lot easier to dig into than the previous um, efforts. Good. Hearing no further um, questions, none. Thank you, Joe. Thank Thanks you. Thank you so much, and the rest of the planning staff. Information discussion item number two, revision of resolution for concert series 2017 to change location of events, Caroline Hasty. Yeah, okay. Um, Mayor the, the, and Council, the only change was the location, uh, moving the summer concert series to Elijah Park, and we we'll ask for your approval for that. The same dates, everything else the same. I, I wrote the dates down just because I think it's worthy mm -hmm. of repeating them. Mm -hmm. um, summer Concert Series, June 24th, Walter Elijah Park from 6 to 9.30. July 15th, from 6 to 9.30, Walter Elijah Park Concert Series. August 12th, 6 to 9.30, Summer Concert Series, Walter Elijah. We also have two dates for movies. Uh, July 13th and August the 10th and I'm assuming those will also start at 6 I didn't have that on the list probably. but I'm assuming probably, so. probably with the movie That's when the sun you goes down yeah. Yeah. can't see it but there wasn't anything on the list uh, the August the 10th <clears throat> Mary can we get a, a motion to approve that mm -hmm. I was trying to hear Ronnie's question okay. who's doing these concerts It'll be a variety of um, musical uh, bands. I think one is music from the 80s. One, it's, it's, it's a variety. Um, so hopefully we'll have something to appeal to everyone. Should be a lot of fun. Uh, a lot of communities do this. I know Pineville does it. Rock Hill does it. Something There'll be food I've trucks. Pushing, something I've been pushing for since mm -hmm. first day. I think you might enjoy it. <laughs> Drive your golf cart, cart up there and have a seat. So, can I entertain speaking, a motion? Uh, speaking of parking, though, how will we handle parking for this event? Well, she's got the, the parking at the base of Elijah and then Calhoun Park. Um, okay. That's the only available parking. Uh, and at the, the soccer field. Yeah. 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 Okay. Mm -hmm. So, you need a motion to approve? Yes, I need, need a, a motion, motion to approve. approve the and resolution for revised resolution for concert series for Thank 2017. You. Okay, I have a motion to approve and a second. Do I have any further questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. A unanimous decision. Thank you. Uh, we do have one executive session item. Council may take action on an executive session item listed on the agenda when they come back into public session. Our executive session item tonight is a discussion of items related to proposed contractual agreements, Kimbrell Crossing subdivision. Do I have a motion to enter into executive session? I'll make that motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. We will return. Thank you. We'll call back into session. Let the record reflect uh, that no decisions or votes were taken in executive session. Do I have a motion to return to regular session? I'll make that motion. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. And we are back in regular session. Um, I think we're down to the round table. Yep. Mr. Huntley, for the good of the order. Uh, a couple items. Number one, I'd like to publicly thank Eric with our zoning department. Uh, I was made aware of a couple home sites that left something to be desired as far as being neat, like Grace knee high, and he did a good job on getting them square away. I just noticed the last one was mowed this afternoon. And uh, 
This past Sunday or Saturday was the anniversary of the Statue of Liberty mm -hmm. being brought in, disassembled into New York Harbor. And the face on the Statue of Liberty was the mother of the sculptor. And uh, she'd had a real rough life. Uh, she had two children that died real early. And the sculptor himself uh, was her last child. And when he was two years old, his father died and his mother raised him. And uh, uh, when he did, uh, sculptured that, he used her face as the face of the Statue of Liberty. Wow. Which I thought was a neat story. It is. That is. Jamie? I'm um, good. Thank you. Lisa? Um, just, I know it's a couple, or a day late, but happy Father's Day to all within our council and in our town that are fathers. We certainly appreciate what you do in raising your children to be great citizens of this town. Um, also wanted to ask Dennis for our next meeting or in between if we could have a presentation on the Strawberry Festival and where we ended up with it. I know it's a budget item for us, so I'm kind of concerned before we go into next budget of the wins and losses and puts and takes. But then also with the town hall too, with the transition to the new town hall, we should be settled enough that we can see um, where we stand on that transition as well. Yeah, what regard can I ask? Uh, budget was part of it. I mean, Way that's under budget. Uh, I understand. Nowhere near. Well, we never saw the first budget, so um, you know, to be able to see that. that would be awesome. I'll, I'll, yeah, happy to get that. Um, just in reference to that the customers, the citizens, everyone coming in, loves it. Uh, the drive-through, people walking in. We, we get praised every day that it looks so professional that it's clean it's neat it works well um, it was a great partnership a great great acquisition yeah. for us for sure are it's we planning well. a um, open house anytime soon yeah I'm gonna get with y'all and get some dates because we're gonna get a dedication plaque made and I need to have some lead time on that and uh, we will have a open house and okay. dedication when's our pictures building. getting moved I'm going to leave them here for council okay. uh, since our meetings are here. Trudy? Um, I had written down the Strawberry Festival as well because I was interested in finding out exactly, um, you know, how everything turned out. Chris? Um, you know? Yes. Uh, um, I Thank attended you. my 20-year uh, high school reunion every weekend, so you that know. was... <laughs> yeah, I had the most gray hair out of everybody, um, but it was good to see some old friends and faces. We had a good time at Bible school week before last at First Baptist Church. Had over 300 kids per night, <coughs> come, and I was with first grade. We had 55 first graders, so I think I'll move back to the recreation after this year. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, thanks to town staff and uh, Joe for all you guys, Dennis and Chipper and uh, for, for all good stuff y'all do for us. So uh, thanks again. That's all I have. Now, Trudy? We have, we've started our ki uh, kindergarten. Listen to me. We started our Bible school this morning as well. I saw that. And, um, I worked in the kitchen. And um, that's hard work when you're on your feet mm -hmm. for four or five hours at the time. Mm -hmm. We're not used to it. Oh, yeah. She's got to take care of my kids. Lot. But going out and feeding those little ones and see their little faces and I don't like that. What is that? <laughs> you know, is it blueberries or strawberries or I never Spinach. had that before. Can I throw it in the trash cans? <laughs> yeah. Ronnie? Uh, praises to Debbie for the cut my list. picnic. Yep. Uh, turned out great. Uh, just wish more people had turned out to it, but she done a great job. And staff uh, for doing that. That it? That's it. I'd like to reiterate um, Mr. Huntley's uh, perspective. Our codes guys, they're under a great deal of pressure uh, to not only review new construction, but to keep up with so many things within our community to ensure that everyone does what they should do without having to be told multiple times to do it. Uh, I would not want that job. And I think they do it with as much grace and um, energy as you could possibly ever hope for. So I do appreciate the code folks. The grass, um, we've had an unusual year of weather, so the grass is waist high in some places. I did notice there's some between family, um, between, what is the first one? 
is it Family Dollar right there in the triangle? Mm -hmm. Family mm -hmm. Dollar and the row of businesses, it's yay tall. You know, so I, I guess you see a lot of reports about snakes and things like that, mosquitoes. So it, it's really surprising how much those folks help with uh, the conditions that we live in and enjoy. Um, I too would like to thank Debbie. We had an employee picnic. Our employees are extremely important. There is nothing and no decision we make that matters at all if we don't have good employees to implement and to maintain our community. They are amazing people and I'm, I'm so grateful uh, for each and every one of them. And I'd like to point out Tony McMahon as we sit here and our cameras, we can hear them moving um, to get this information out to our community and do the work that he does is wonderful. Thank you, Tony. Um, I also think it's important to point out, I think Jamie brought it up last time, that school's out. Um, you've got kids on playgrounds, sidewalks, um, riding bikes, uh, doing a lot of things. So let's don't keep chippers guys running towards accidents and let's don't harm any of our youngest. So uh, please be safe as we travel to and from vacation. And I'd like to thank council. There's so many times that, um, I guess there's more times that I'm frustrated and pick up the phone and say, why, 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 why? And you guys are really wonderful um, to listen and to provide uh, that calming effect that I often need. Um, but I also like to think that we cheer each other on and that we do the things that are right because we choose to serve our community. And I thank you for that. Anything else for the good of the whole? Then we'll entertain a motion we'll for adjournment. Motion, we adjourn. I'll second. Have a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Thank you. 120 of them kids.